Good morning, Mox, and welcome to the Weekly Report. I'm Adrian Cimenti. And I'm Jacob McDougall, and this is your Campus Weekly News Show. From Grammys to A's' newest event and blockbuster trades in the world of basketball, there's a lot to discuss, so let's get into it. This is your Weekly News Show. Let's start off with recent news in the entertainment sphere. The 65th annual Grammys took place this past Sunday, at February 5th. The broadcast had about 8.93 million viewers, with people from across America tuning in to watch the red carpet full of stars. This yearly event once again featured many notable awards. Some of these include Into the Woods winning Best Theater, Musical Theater Album, Kim Petras makes history as first trans woman to win a Grammy for Best Pop Duo, and Viola Davis becoming the 18th EGOT recipient after winning a Grammy for Best Audiobook Narration and Storytelling Recording. Additionally, Harry Styles' album Harry's House won Album of the Year, and Taylor Swift's short film music video for All Too Well won Best Music Video. The month of February celebrates Black History Month, a national recognition of the oftentimes neglected accomplishments of black, history, black Americans in history. This recognition was made official as a full month of celebration in 1986, marking this the 37th year with the month as we know it today. To partake in the recognition of this rich history and culture, consider, consider attending one of the many events being put on by FSC's Black Student Union and the Simmons Center, such as Soul Talks, Black Love Skate, Black in Nature, and their month-long BSU balloon blast tabling over at Buckstop. Fans of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series are finally able to experience the full magic of being a student at Hogwarts, thanks to the new video game Hogwarts Legacy. Players are able to fully customize themselves, including their Hogwarts house, as they explore the world in the 1890s. Level progression allows players to access more spells, talents, and abilities as they start school as a fifth year. This new installment under Warner Brothers' Port Key Games will be released in three installments, available on almost all platforms, PS5, Xbox X and S, and Windows are released on February 10th. Older editions of the PlayStation and Xbox are released on April 4th, and Nintendo Switch is released on July 25th. Now on to news right here on campus. As a reminder, the Association of Campus Entertainment, more affectionately known as ACE, has been hosting the photo challenge, Fall in Love with ACE, on Instagram for all students to participate in. Throughout the month of February, ACE will be running this challenge, providing a new photo prompt for each day. From posing with a campus cat to attending Something Rotten, each day features something students can get involved with. As an additional bonus, ACE states that the top 30 people who post for the most days will win an ACE-themed crew neck. All that is required is that you post a picture related to the day's prompt on your Instagram story and tag them at ACE underscore FSC. This Wednesday, February 8th, marks the semester's big convocation event. Here with us here to join us and speak with us is renowned civil rights attorney Fred David Gray. Gray is known for having litigated several civil rights cases, working with figures such as Claudette Colvin, Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King Jr. Following his talk in Branscombe at 10.50 a.m., students are encouraged to attend the various events being held by the Simmons Center, such as the Simmons Center Anniversary Block Party, the Fireside Chat with Fred David Gray, and Senator Arthenia Joyner, as well as Attorney's Book Signing, all here on campus. For more information, check Engage. SoCo Productions will be hosting a music event entitled Your Valentine's Day Playlist. This show is centered around the premise of different kinds of relationships, featuring songs full of love and heartbreak your heart can handle. According to SoCo's event page, a date is encouraged but not required, whether it be romantic or platonic. If you wish to attend this music showcase, head to Badcock Gardens at 8 p.m. on February 10th. Expanding out to U.S. news, this past Saturday, an F-22 fighter jet fired a missile at a balloon in the sky, puncturing it off the coast near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. According to senior defense officials, this balloon was a suspected Chinese spy balloon, drawing alarm and attention as it was traveling along sensitive military sites across North America. According to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the flyover was accidental and they stated that they reserved the right to take further actions criticizing the U.S. for an obvious overreaction and a serious violation of international practice. China's, China's denied any claims of spying, stating that this was a civilian use balloon intended for meteorology research. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs emphasized that the balloon's journey was out of its control and urged the U.S. not to smear it because of the balloon. Tensions, have, tensions remain high, however, as the media and citizen alike, citizens alike speculate as to what occurred here in this strange instance. Now let's move into sports news. A blockbuster trade has gone through between the Brooklyn Nets and the Dallas Mavericks. 
The trade sends former All-NBA point guard and NBA champion Kyrie Irving to the Mavericks in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, a 2029 first round pick and multiple seconds. This comes after Irving requested a trade just days before the NBA trade deadline. The trade came as a shock to fans and players around the league who were left wondering how well Kyrie and Luka would fit together. This concern has left many wondering what this trade means for the future of both teams. This weekend, the Mox baseball and softball teams hosted the University of West Florida and Ursuline College, respectively, to open their seasons. The baseball team played their first games on Saturday, splitting the doubleheader with the Argonauts after a dramatic first game win in extra innings. They would go on to lose the series to visitors on Sunday in another hard-fought contest that would also end in extra innings. On the other hand, the softball team swept, swept Ursuline on Sunday, winning the first game in walk-off fashion and having their first shutout of the season in Game 2. Early last Wednesday morning, NFL quarterback Tom Brady announced that he will be retiring for good in a brief video posted to his social media accounts. This follows his record-breaking 23-season career in which he won seven Super Bowls, earning most valuable player for five of them. The star will surely be missed by his team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and countless fans from around the world. Moving forward, Brady is, excited, is expected to step into the role of TV broadcaster after recently signing a 10-year contract with Fox Sports. Tragedy st struck Lakeland last Monday. On January 30th, the driver and passenger of a dark blue Nissan Altima opened fire at the nearby intersection of North Iowa Avenue and Plum Street here in the city of Lakeland. The targeted attack, as referred to by the Lakeland Police Department, left 11 adults injured, two of whom were left in critical condition. Witnesses were left distressed by this event, especially upon learning a school bus of children were dropped off just a moment before, narrowly missing the time, fr time frame of the attack. Authorities discovered the abandoned vehicle the following morning on January 31st, along with firearms inside the vehicle itself. The police have reported that they have a list of suspects, however, as of the time of recording, the shooters and their two accomplices have not been taken into custody. At the crime scene, authorities found evidence of drug sales happening at the time. However, it is unknown at this time if it was related. Since then, ministries from around Polk County have gathered to hand out food and drinks as a way to show the community they are not alone. They remarked that events such as this are a disaster and need to be treated as such. Police have offered a $5,000 reward for anyone who provides useful information leading to an arrest. Reports can be submitted by calling 1-900-226-8477. That's 1-900-226-8477. Or by visiting the Heartland Crime Stoppers website. Everyone here at FSC TV wishes those affected a safe and quick recovery. That's it for this week's edition of the Weekly Report. Once again, I'm Adrian Cimenti with Jacob McDougall saying thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.